Hello everyone, my name is Ray. Thank you for visiting my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe. This is part two of how to build a lathe from the stuff that's already in your shop. Every shop is different, but for my shop, this is what I was able to find. In episode one, if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend to see that. There'll be a link in your upper right. I put together uh, this headstock spindle uh, from stuff that I already had here. And honestly, I wish I had done this little exercise sooner because I would have had a little lathe that uh, I could be using. So what I'd like to do uh, on this episode is... Uh, make a bed. I went outside and I found a piece of 2x8. I think this will make a good bed. I got a 2x4 on the bench here and I think we're just going to see what we can come up with. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing but uh, you'll see it as I develop it. Cue the time lapse. Okay, well, we have some progress. What you see is a, um, a four foot two by eight. Like I said, I had a, a two by eight pressure treated board just sitting around. Use that for the bed and um, a couple pieces of uh, two by fours there. So two by eight and two by fours. And uh, the, the uh, bearings are temporarily mounted for the moment. And um, there you go. The chuck works nice. And, and it's really, uh, I'm surprised it's this centered. Um, so uh, I don't have a belt yet to mount the motor but I'm going to be taking the belt off of my drill press I don't have any loose belts around here so that is uh, the drill press has just volunteered to donate its belt um, and there, there we have it so up next is the tailstock let's see what we can come up with on a tailstock back to the time lapse All right, well, we have, let me zoom in a little bit, we have the tailstock assembly. So here's the tailstock assembly, it actually slides very nicely. It's a little bit snug in the back, but this is a piece of wood, so it's not going to be perfect. And up here, it's just a tad bit on the loose side. I'll have to, I'll have to uh, do something about that. 
But there we have it. The tail stock assembly is done. I need to, all I need to do now is drill a hole and mount my hub. And you're going to see that next. What I have here is actually a circle cutting bit for tile and you might be able to make out that this is carbide tipped and carbide tipped. On a whim I said let me see if this will work in wood and guess what it does. And The reason I'm doing this is because I need to make a hole. You can see a couple of test holes. I need to make a hole in uh, my tile stock assembly to accept my live center, um, my live center hub like this so this is just about the right size i want that to go in there relatively snugly and that hole is actually because it's wood it's uh, tight in one direction and kind of loose in the other but i think that'll be a tap-in fit so uh, i'm going to go ahead and and set this down and let you watch how it drills because uh, i don't know i'm going to drill that little piece of wood back there and see how it comes out There it is. Okay, well, the hole is not perfect. I think I'll make it a little bit smaller uh, and that way I can I can sand it, but there it is. That's actually not bad. It's uh it's tight enough. I think I'll make the uh the hole just a pinch smaller and then run it through the spindle sander to smooth it up. But yeah, that is that is quite quite a nice uh quite a nice hole. Nice fit I should say. There we are. You can see there's a little bit of a step in there, not perfect. Definitely not perfect. But remember, I already had that bit. Otherwise it'd have been a a, a a job for the scroll saw to make that hole, and that was that was considerably easier. Just gotta watch your fingers. That's a there's a lot of stuff flying around on that bit. Okay, so I've got the hole in there. As you saw, I went from both sides because the bit is not long enough. And you can see it's a little bit under. It just will just start. So that gives me enough room to go ahead and and sand it. And I will just put in the spindle sander and just gently clean that up until this is a tap-in fit. And that will basically finish the uh, the tailstock. I just have to put in a center. All right, let's uh, let's get to that.
All right, we have made some progress today. Check it out. Headstock, tailstock. That's very nice. Total lapse time since we started uh, this project, including part one, has been about four hours. So not bad for half a day. I think another half a day or so we'll have this project complete. And the best part of all, keep in mind, this is all stuff that I found here in the shop. It was all here. I have yet to buy anything, including any of the fasteners. Everything was here. The best part about it. Homemade lathe, made from stuff lying around. Live center, check it out. Live center for the tailstock bicycle wheel hub. Uh, an unusual hub, uh, but, um, but I think any bicycle hub will work. Uh, if you're thinking about making a homemade lathe, and I hope after seeing this set uh, videos, that uh, this series of videos, you're thinking about it. Maybe you got a few things lying around. Maybe some of them are good for a lathe. Maybe you're, uh, you need a lathe to build. Uh, not a bad example. No plans, didn't have any concept, just built it. So, we are going to call that an into part two. Uh, please, if you have any questions or suggestions, put them in the comments. I read all the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. Um, please don't forget to subscribe and look forward to part three coming out probably in a few days. Thank you again.